talk today about the lactate clearance in synthesis. So that uh, the title of the journal is lactate clearance and mortality in pediatric sepsis. Actually, it's a common topic as many, many journals had been published, but we choose it because they did uh, they choose creatine clearance rather, rather than the initial lactate or the lactate after some time. So uh, sepsis is a life-threatening condition often encountered in the pediatric intensive care unit. In the last five decades, despite the use of aggressive antibiotics and advances in intensive care medicine, the mortality rate of sepsis remains high. In 2005, the WHO estimated that 11 million children are, die annually due to the sepsis. Of these, 30,000 children under five years of age die daily. Serum lactate concentration is useful to evaluate the progression of sepsis in children. In sepsis, systemic inflammation can lead to multiple organ dysfunction, impairing tissue oxygenation and increasing the production of serum lactate. Increasing the lactate is indicative of anaerobic metabolism caused by tissue hypoxia and is a good marker to assist tissue perfusion in sepsis and septic shock. Lactate clearance can be used to evaluate the outcomes in sepsis management in children. So a state of hyperlactatemia, they specified a serum lactate more than two is a cardinal sign of sepsis and septic shock. A resolved global tissue hypoxia, as indicated by inadequate lactate clearance, is associated with multi-organ dysfunction and increased mortality during the early phase of resuscitation in patients with septic shock. The initial lactate level represents only a patient's initial status and therefore cannot reflect the lactate level changes over time. Hence, lactate clearance can be used to demonstrate the severity of hyperlactatine. So they did, not, they did not depend only on the presenting lactate level, but they measured lactate level six hours after initial presentation. And with some equation, they calculated what is called creatinine clearance. So uh, did the study address a clearly focused issue? Yes. The, uh, the, the main aim of the study is to evaluate the relationship between lactate clearance and patient mortality and to assess the usefulness of lactate clearance as an early prognostic marker in pediatric sepsis. So they addressed a clear focused issue. So uh, was the cohort recruited in an acceptable way? Was the exposure accurately measured to minimize bias? Uh, yes, the cohort recruited in an acceptable way. It's a prospective cohort study. It was conducted at a tertiary level hospital between November 2013 and 2014. Consecutive sampling was undertaken on 45 children aged one month to 15 uh, years who were diagnosed with sepsis according to the inclusion criteria. So they have inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria, admission lactate, lactate after six hours. Uh, first lactate serum was measured immediately following the patient admission to PICU. The next serum lactate measured was six hours after initial treatment in PICU. So the inclusion criteria were uh, subjects diagnosed in accordance with the International Pediatric Sepsis Consensus Conference, whose age ranged from one month to 15 years. So the exclusion, malnutrition, severe dehydration, malignancy, burns, trauma, congenital metabolic disorder, severe malaria, or long-term steroid use. So they included all patients uh, with sepsis based on the IPSCC criteria. I will come to it in the next slide. And they excluded patients with malnutrition, severe dehydration, malignancy, burns, other causes of SIRS, I mean. So I just put this slide uh, to memorize our uh, team with the, the definition of uh, SERS, sepsis, septic shock. Uh, so, so SERS, the, by, by definition, the presence of at least two of the following four criteria, one of which abnormal leukocytic count and abnormal temperature. So fever or uh, hypothermia, tachycardia or bradycardia, 
ticket near uh, leukocyte, leukocyte count elevated or depressed. So this is by definition a SERS. So when I suspect or I have a proven evidence of infection, it's sepsis. Uh, severe sepsis, it's sepsis plus one of the following, cardiovascular organ dysfunction or acute respiratory distance room or two or more of or other organ dysfunction. Septic shock, it's sepsis and cardiovascular organ dysfunction defined. So uh, they used this equation to calculate the creatinine clearance. Uh, creatinine clearance, initial lactate level at on, upon admission to the PICU minus lactate level six hours after divided by initial lactate level multiplied by 100. So by this equation, the outcome accurately measured to minimize bias. So the outcome, it will come in the next slide. So have the authors identified all important confounding factors? Have they taken account of the confounding factors in the design? In my opinion, I can tell because a lot of confounding factors you didn't take, uh, they come across. I will go to this table. So in this table, uh, they compared uh, the survivors and non-survivors. So the overall, overall pa uh, patients included in the study are 45. Two of them uh, died in the first before they complete the six hours. So we are left only with 43. So uh, malnutrition, though they supposed to rule out patients with malnutrition, they included here in the study, 12 of the patients undernourished. And strangely, uh, non-survivors are five and survivors are seven. Meaning if it's malnutrition, it's a significant factor affecting sepsis. They should, any you know, logic, to say that non, uh, patient non-survivors should have higher number in minority children. When you compared, we have we came across the respiratory system sinus infection. If the focus of the respiratory system sinus infection, they have higher number of non-survivors, and gram-negative gram bacteremia, almost all of them uh, non-survivor. Non and one more thing I noticed in this uh, table, the non-survivor trial cultures are 38. So 38 out of 45, almost more than 85% have culture negative, which a big question mark on this study. So far in the blood, no one like to discuss anything. Serum lactate measurements at the time of the hospital admission, the initial serum lactate, and six hours after treatment, as well as lactate clearance calculation. So they put this table between survivors and non-survivors. They measured the mean, the mean lactate, mean initial lactate, and mean lactate after six hours, mean lactate clearance, this one. So the lactate clearance was 85% uh, and the survivors and 18% on non-survivors. The calculation based on the, the uh, equation we mentioned in this slide. Lactate clearance and mortality in pediatric sepsis. This is a second outcome in this study, the mortality, creatinine clearance, relation for creatinine clearance and the mortality. So, uh, uh, among survivors and non-survivors, survivors 29 and survivors 16, when the creatinine clearance is uh, more than, uh, less than 34%, the, the non-survivors are 14 out of 15. So low creatinine clearance, less than 34, is associated with high mortality rate. So lactate clearance, it's more effective than initial lactate level for predicting mortality outcomes in a children with sepsis. Lactate clearance reflects change in lactate metabolism. Sepsis patients who respond to treatment have higher levels of lactate clearance. Sepsis patients who do not respond to treatment have decreased lactate clearance with lactate accumulation in the body due to prolonged tissue hypoxia. 
decreased lactate clearance may reflect disruptions in the body's metabolism due to the anaerobic metabolism during sepsis. So uh, we'll come to the critical appraisal skills uh, program. So the critical appraisal of this study. So section one, are the results of the study valid? Did the study address a clearly focused issue? We said yes. The, uh, the, the main issue of the creatinine clearance in patients with sepsis admitted to the PICU, they defined sepsis clearly. They had admission lactate and lactate after six hours. Was the cohort recruited in an acceptable way? Uh, yes, they recruited uh, patients with sepsis in a tertiary level ICU from one month to 15 years. Was the exposure accurately measured to minimize bias? That's I, I can't tell because the all patient was suspicious of sepsis. As uh, the table I showed before, almost 85, 80, 85% of patients had culture negative. Uh, I know we have significant number of culture negative septic shock, but not to an extent of 85%. So they may have other, other factors that contribute to uh, the presentation or to the presentation of SARS. Uh, was the outcome accurately measured to minimize bias? Yes, they measured the creatinine clearance of an admission and six hours divided with the equation set. So are the results of the study valid? Have the authors uh, identified all important confounding factors? I think yes, except for the malnutrition because he initially he excluded children with malnutrition, but in the table, there are uh, 12 of the total patients are malnourished or undernutrition. The, was the follow-up of subjects complete enough? Was the follow-up of the subjects long, long enough? They followed the patient till the discharge from the PICU. So no, no further follow-up. So I don't think they followed the patient later on. What are the results of the study? Uh, how precise are the results? Do they believe in the results? Actually, they have... Uh, these are the results regarding the long outcome mortality. So we have a clear high mortality rates in patients with low lactate clearance. Lactate clearance less than 34% having high mortality rates compared to those with uh, high lactate clearance. Do you believe the results Actually, yes, because we have many studies. I will go through some, uh, I, I reviewed the literature. I have many studies uh, with, with all, almost you know, equivalent uh, outcomes. Type. Can the results be applied to the local population? Yes, we, have, we are on a tertiary level PICU and we, can, uh, we have many patients with sepsis. We, can, we are already checking the lactate or point admission, but we can make a follow-up after six hours. Do the results of this study fit with other available evidence? Yes. What are the implications of this study for practice? It's of prognostic, actually, it's of prognostic uh, uh, significance. So if I have a patient admitted with high lactate, it doesn't mean that this patient have a poor prognosis. But if I have admission high lactate with poor lactate clearance six hours after, this means this type of patients would have a poor outcome. So this study, it's six hours, six years before the study I presented. It's published in the Journal of Critical Care. It, it states uh, early lactate clearance in septic patients with elevated lactate levels admitted from the emergency department to intensive care unit. Time to aim higher. Uh, it's published and uh, the, the main author is Volker Ethan. He reported that lactate clearance within the first six hours of treatment was a good indicator of mortality outcomes in children with sepsis. In their study, lactate clearance at the first six hours with a cutoff point of 36 had a sensitivity of 88% and a specificity of 64%. In this study, lactate clearance cutoff point at six hours of treatment was 34.7%. 
with sensitivity of 87% and specificity of 96%. So almost any yani, equivalent results. In another study, uh, it's older than uh, that study published in the Shock magazine. It's a multi-center study of early elected clearance as a department of survival, as, the, as a determinant of survival in patients with presumed sepsis. So uh, compared mortality rates by comparing different categories of lactate clearance during treatment, they divided subjects into two groups, those with elevated lactate clearance of more than 10 and those with elevated with, uh, with, low, with low lactate clearance less than 10. They found that there is significantly higher mortality rate was observed in the group with low, creati low lactate clearance less than 10 than the group with high lactate clearance. But in our study, the mortality rate increased significantly in the non-survivor group for lactate clearance cutoff point less than 34%. Uh, in another study uh, in the Journal of Emergency Trauma and Shock, lactate clearance as the predictor of outcome in pediatric septic shock. The checked serial lactate levels can be used to predict outcome in pediatric septic shock. A 24-hour lactate clearance cutoff less than 10 is a predictor of in-hospital mortality in such patients. So they compared, they calculated the creatinine clearance over 24 hours rather than our study, which calculated in the initial six hours. Uh, last but not the least, in uh, the Journal of Intensive Care Society, I came across this uh, study. Lactate clearance prognosticates outcome in pediatric septic shock during first 24 hours of intensive care unit admission. So they concluded that optimal lactate clearance in pediatric septic shock, both during the early presentation and after the initial golden hours is associated with low in hospital and 60 day mortality. Further 24 hour lactate clearance appears superior to six hour lactate clearance in predicting mortality in such patients. This is my last slide in the, our journal today. <clears throat>